Hey everyone, welcome back to the next module in the SAS course. And in this video, we're going to dive really deep into SAS partials, variables, and imports. So let's jump behind our computer here and get coding. Do you remember that folder that we just worked on, the folder structure where we created the plugins, base layouts, modules, and the, did the directories and everything like that? Well, I've slightly modified it here and I want you to go ahead and copy that and also take note that this is also available as a download in the course files. So if you just wanna have easy access to just plug that over onto your desktop, you can certainly do that. Uh, but I want you to create a couple extra folders here and start off with CSS folder. And that's where your output CSS will be uh, compiled to keep it nice and simple. And you're gonna have a SAS folder that's going to contain all of those SAS files, all the SAS files. So plugins, base layouts, modules, and the app SAS file. So when they're condensed, everything is going to be, everything's gonna be nice and clean CSS and SAS so that they're separated and easy to navigate. So we wanna be able to have that when we're templating and creating a folder structure. So that's, you're gonna be your base folder structure. But we're gonna start talking about SAS partials. Partials in SAS are meant to what is called modularize your uh, CSS and keep things easy to maintain. So we already kind of started with that by you know having these separate SAS files. This is modularizing your SAS and keeping everything separate so that you can edit little chunks of your CSS and have them separate in, organ in an organized fashion and so that you can pull them using the imports. But what we didn't do yet is use a partial and partials are kind of uh, SAS files that are partial uh, chunks of, of CSS. So you might be wondering, well, aren't these considered partials? Well, Technically, in the way that the, they are being used, the way that we're using them, we have little chunks of modularized styles, but an actual partial starts with a leading underscore, and that tells SAS uh, to not compile that file into uh, generated into a CSS file. And now this is where you might be wondering, well, when we had our compiler run, it wasn't outputting a CSS file. So why do I need to start with a trailing underscore uh, to, ha to have these be considered actual partials? Well, that's because specifically in our command line here, if I were to, uh, to jump back into this uh, folder here, when we said sass watch, we gave it a specific file to watch. We didn't tell it to watch the entire directory. We told it to watch app. SAS. So we're, we're going to tell it to, you know, we did this, we said watch SAS and then app.sass and then output CSS slash app.css. So when we go ahead to watch that, what happened is when we save our SAS file, it's going to compile into app.css. So very simple. It's only watching one file. But if you wanted to watch an entire directory, because sometimes you might have additional root SAS files, well, that's where things are gonna, uh, that's where problems are gonna happen. So let me show you what happens when you don't actually have these be real partials. So I'm gonna cancel that, and I'm gonna tell SAS to watch an entire directory. So here we go. Watch the SAS folder and compile it to the CSS folder. Let's see if this works. Okay, so did you see what just happened? It just wrote a bunch of new directories and CSS files and CSS maps because these aren't partials. So now in our CSS folder, look what we have. Plugins, plugins, directory, CSS. That's not, that's not good, but it has, you know, it has nothing in here. It has, you know, the base directory styles, but it has a, it's a, it's a mess. It's got a bunch of files and every file, it's just exporting CSS files that kind of has CSS and kind of doesn't. It, everything's just messy. It's not, it's not right. This isn't the way we wanted it. We wanted one CSS file. And that's because none of these were partials. All of these were just actual CSS or SAS files. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these files. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell SAS to stop compiling here. So I'm gonna CD back into that folder there, folder structure. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make all of these partials. So every file except for app.sass. So every file you do not want to compile into its own counterpart of a CSS file, 
have them start with a trailing underscore. So we'll start with plugins dot dir. That's going to be underscore plugins dir. And I'm going to rename all of these to have trailing underscores because they are all considered partials. I don't want any of them to compile into its own CSS file like you just saw. So do I have all of my, oh, I need modules as well. Now this is what a bunch of partials look like in SAS. So now SAS doesn't consider these true SAS files, they're partials and they're not gonna compile them. So if I were to do the same thing and say SAS, uh, SAS double dash watch the SAS folder compile to the CSS folder, what should happen is it should just compile the app.css, just like that. Beautiful. And that's because these are partials. And you don't have to change anything in, in your app.sass folder because SAS, again, knows the file extension and it knows that it's a, a partial and you don't need to add the trailing underscore in the import. You just need to have it like so. So that is how that would work in the command line. That's how you would use a partial by starting with a trailing underscore of all the files you don't want to be compiled to CSS so that your app.sass file can actually export those partials into its CSS. Now, if you're using something like CodeKit, CodeKit is kind of smart and you can see here, it knows that these are partials. It's saying this file generate, uh, this file does not generate an output, it's imported by other files. The funny thing with CodeKit that I noticed is that even if these weren't partials, if I were just to rename this and have this not be a partial, it's still not gonna compile that for some reason. And it's possible that maybe if I were to, to watch just a certain folder that maybe it would export everything, but it, it seems to be smart and know that there's no direct output in this file. It's, it's a partial even without the underscore. So something's tricky there, but you don't wanna just rely on the, the intelligence of an app like CodeKit. You wanna make sure you're doing the right naming conventions. You want this to be uh, a partial. And you want to avoid some major problems if you were to have all these be just SAS files and not partials and you hand your project off to a developer and maybe they're not using CodeKit, maybe they're using command the command line, they go to compile and you have like a hundred SAS files. Now you're going to have way too many CSS files. It's going to clog up the directory. It's going to look like a mess. It's going to be a nightmare. So use the partials uh, to make sure you don't compile those files directly. So those are SAS partials. The next thing that we're gonna learn about are variables. Now variables, we've already kind of touched on variables with our previous little quick examples, but variables recycle repetitive styles like colors and measurements. Variables, they store information into little buckets like a programming language. You store data into little buckets, little variables that you can reuse uh, throughout the rest of your style sheet that you can use them later. You can recycle them and you can store data in there like colors, font stacks, uh, you know, measurements, CSS values, and it allows you to recycle little snippets of CSS throughout your entire project. I'll show you here what a variable looks like. I know you probably have a little bit of an idea now that we played around with them, but why don't we go ahead and use our folder structure here just, just to play around with. So I'm just gonna create a new file in here called index.html and you can do the same. This is just gonna be basic, nothing, uh, nothing crazy here. I'm gonna put this in the root. And if you're using Atom, you could just type in HTML and hit tab. It's gonna give you a basic HTML skeleton. And we're just gonna say SAS. This is just gonna be a little sandbox file, nothing really fancy. And I'm just gonna give a class, uh, uh, a div of the class of box and that's it in our head here. We're gonna link up that style sheet and that's gonna be located in CSS and app.css and it's already linked it in there. You can see orange red as the background color in our base SAS. And let's go to modules and instead of widget, why don't we call this box because we were gonna style that box. So then we're gonna go back to our modules directory and pull in box. So now we're going to go to our box SAS file and let's let's style the box, uh, but let's use some variables. So let's say variables here and for a variable, let's say something like base color. 
and then we can say, I don't know, yellow. Just something simple. And let's style our box. Let's say we have a height of 100 pixels, a width of 100 pixels, and background, we're gonna say base color. Save that. Here in our HTML, you could see we use the variable base color yellow. If we wanted to do something a little bit different, like maybe let's say uh, we have a level one heading that says hello, we have a level two heading that says world, and then level three heading that says sup. And then we're gonna go back to our, let's go to base. And let's say in our base styles, we have some variables up here, font stack. What if we said instead of font stack, we said font stack dash serif. So this is our serif font stack. We're gonna say Georgia times and serif, and we wanted a font stack sans serif. And we said Helvetica Arial sans serif and no semicolon. So those are our two, uh, our two variables for the font stacks. And let's say level one headings, we use uh, font family, font stack serif. And for level two and level three headings, we use font family, uh, we're gonna use the font stack sans serif. So if I save that, you can see we have the H1 is a serif font stack, and then the other two, H2 and three are sans serif font stack. So that's how you use variables. Now you might be wondering, well, Am I just gonna have variables that are all over the place? We're gonna have some in this partial, we're gonna have some over in this partial, and is it just gonna get really messy? Well, you can go ahead and do something really neat and um, you know you can have a global variables uh, file where you have all your global variables so that you can use that as almost like a toggle, toggle board uh, page that you can use as your settings and have all of your variables in there. So you could do something like this. So in none of these folders, let's have uh, a new SAS file and let's call it variables.sass and that could also be a partial. We don't want that to export, although it's just gonna be variables so it won't export anyway. And in here is where we can have all of our variables. What we wanna do is uh, start our import with variables and we're gonna say variables, that should import the variables file just like that. And now in here is where we can have all of our variables. Let's say global variables. And then in here, let's take our, uh, let's go to our box and let's take that out of there and say base color. What else did we have? We had modules, no, we had base. So we had these font stacks. Let's try this out. We'll go back to our variables, font stacks. Now if I save, those variables are now accessible to all of my partials because in my app.sass file, I'm calling it first. I don't know if I were to call it last, if it would work. It doesn't work if you call it last because all of these are referencing these variables, but they can't find them anywhere. So they need to be imported first before anything. And so now all your variables can be in here. You can have branding, you know, like brand color, and you could say pink, and uh, you know you can have things like font size base, and you could say 18 pixels. And now you can do things like this. You can go to this partial, and you could say font size, font size base. And Atom already knows that that is a variable, and now my font size base is a little bit larger. Or if I wanted the background to be brand color. Now it's pulling in the variables from a variables file. So that is how you would use variables to, you have them in a global file so that you can call those variables from different sections of your SAS structure. And the last thing that we were kind of gonna talk about was imports. And we've already learned a lot about imports uh, by using them in our folder structure. And imports lets you split the CSS into small maintainable portions. So we've done that here in modules, layouts, and base. You could see, all of these little uh, files here, they're, they're using imports in the directories. So we're importing base and the app SAS file, we're using imports all around here. And the thing is with this, how it's different from normal CSS is when you're using the at import uh, in CSS, it creates additional HTTP requests. But SAS builds on top of the current CSS import by re not requiring an HTTP request, basically what it does is it takes that file 
and it combines it with the file you're importing. So it serves only one CSS file. So to dumb that down, if you were just using CSS imports and this, this wasn't SAS, you'd have all of these separate imports, these lines will be HTTP requests and that clogs up load time. SAS is smart, doesn't treat it as an additional HTTP request. It just takes the CSS, imports it into the, uh, the file that you're calling those imports from, and then it creates one CSS file. It's kind of like a PHP include if you're familiar with PHP. So that's what's really cool about uh, SAS imports. And we've already touched on that, so we don't really need to kick a dead horse here. You get the idea. And if you wanted to learn anything more about variables, partials, and imports, you could just head to sas-lang.com slash guide. And there's a really nice and simple documentation there if you just want to see some other examples or you know see what SAS has to say about it. So that is it for this video right now. I hope that uh, proved to be valuable to you. I know it was quite a lot. The folder structure, you know, it can, it can look a little bit big at first, but trust me, as your sites grow, it's so nice to have such a great organization within your folder structure. You have your SAS folder, your CSS folder. Things are simple. Everyone's happy. I'm happy. You're happy. See you in the next video. Hey, and welcome back to the next the SAS course. So much more awesome. What? They will make your projects fly like an eagle in outer space. Hey, and welcome back to the next module. And in this video, we're gonna learn all about SAS imports. Why don't I ever remember that? Partials, imports, and what? Stay tuned because 